Hello, thank you for joining me today, and God bless you. Well, we've entered into a new phase, a new wave, if you will. The spirit war rages around us, across the world. And Satan has his devices set against us. This message is titled, You Won't Win the Spiritual War, Fighting Under the Gnostic Gospel. What would Jesus do? And if you have to ask yourself, what would Jesus do? Then you're probably not being led by his spirit, and his word doesn't reside within you. Because no matter what we go through in this life, we should be led by the spirit of Jesus. Now, in these days, and as we enter ourselves into this spirit world as spirit war, as we're being pulled in, the enemy's devices that are set against us, they're very crafty. And Satan knows that if you violate God's law and... You know, if you hate your brother, if you rebel against authority, things like that, not only does that cause a blindness, but it also causes you to offend. And then he's able to use that darkness to get you to do different things out of fear, which we're also not supposed to fear him. And the only thing that we're supposed to fear is the Lord. So, for the last few days, you know, is the news of Trump asking his followers to rebel. <laughs> uh, it's kind of funny because on Monday this morning, today, in, what was that, uh, Zero Hedge, there was an article where Paul Joseph Watson had polled his followers in Truth Social uh, that, uh, you know, whether they thought that Trump calling them to revolt was a trap like January 6th. And 85% of them responded yes. So that's very positive. But these, uh, you know, protest movements and rebellion movements are happening all over the world. Macron in France just raised the uh, retirement age of an entitlement um, outside of, I guess, French law. But really, as the economy fails, these governments want the people to rebel. They want war. They want destruction because that's the perfect excuse to hide all of the financial malfeasance and just um, really horrible things that await us financially either way. So the devil knows that if he can get you to rebel, then he can uh, use that to institute martial law or, you know, go to war and all these other things. So, if we're being pulled into this war, we really need to be ready for it. And that's what we're going to study today. And if you're going to fight in the spirit war, you need the spirit of God to operate within you. If you've watched my channel, you know that the true gospel is that the good news is that if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you your sins. And cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And that when we are cleansed of all unrighteousness, if we live in and remain in his spirit, his spirit can't sin. And if we're in him, we can't sin because he can't sin. That's the good news. So anyway, we're going to cover quite a bit of scripture as normal. Um, first in Luke 10, verse 17 through 20. We read this, I think, in the last video on Scripture, anyway. 
And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto you, unto us through your name. And he said to them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. And in this we see where he said he beheld Satan falling like lightning unto heaven as these people were, you know, just uh, getting puffed up from being used by the Lord. The Lord gave them power just as the Lord gave Satan power. And... And nothing shall by in any means hurt you. The early church was persecuted. Okay. And so that doesn't mean that we won't be harmed in the earth, in our, in our mortal bodies. But nothing can spiritually harm us. We'll see this again later in the, um, re with respect to the armor of God. But when, when we're in the Spirit, we have fruits of the Spirit, we have gifts of the Spirit. Essentially, we're living in a life where we're allowing God to work through us, and they're not our works. So we can't get all fleshy where it comes to this spirit war that we're in that is also being fought in the flesh. Satan wants you to fight that war in the flesh, and you got to fight it in the spirit. So we need to learn what the enemy, he has power to do these things. We see that in Job 1, verse 6 through 12. Now there was a day when the sons of God, and that's the angels, came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Where do you come from? And Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? And Satan answered and said, Doth Job fear God for nothing? Has thou made a hedge about him and about his house and all that he has on every side? Has thou blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land? But put forth your hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee in thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath, hath is in your power. Upon him put not forth your hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord, went after Job, and he immediately went after his children, after all the things uh, he possessed. And one day, Job lost everything. And uh, through that, uh, Job really uh, helped God prove to Satan that it wasn't the things that he had. And for being a good servant, Job was given uh, more than what he had before, I think twice or twice as much as he had before, three times. Anyway, um, the long and short of it is uh, Satan does have authority and power in the earth. He is the God of this earth, and the Lord has given him that power. So whenever we, the Lord works through us and does things, it's not us doing them. Psalm 51, deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud thou righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else I would give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart. O God, will thou not despise? Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. And of course, we know that we are built in the walls of Jerusalem. 
1 Peter 2, verses 5 through 9. Ye also as lively stones are built up to a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ, by him working in our life. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief corner stone, elect, precious, and he that believeth in him shall not be confounded. What would Jesus do? You know what Jesus would do, because he's working in your life. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. Jesus is the word, the living word. The Jesus is the law. And uh, here we see that the law was built in, in stone. The builders disallowed. And a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense. They're, he's talking about the word. Even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Not a weird people, okay? You were chosen, separated, sanctified, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you show forth the praises of him that called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And it's not you going and telling them that they're sinning and that they're going to be damned if they don't come to, you know, uh, repentance. It's not that that, that speaks louder than anything you can say. It's that you're showing forth his praise even in your darkest days. Okay? Second Peter 2, 1 through 15. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. In the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit you to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. You therefore... Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangle himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. They're going to take your entitlement? Let them. They're going to take your land? Let them. We're just passing through anyway. Verse 5, And if a man strive for masteries, yet he is not crowned, what were we called to be? a royal priesthood. And if a man strive for masteries, yet he is not crowned, except he strive lawfully. Now, is that the law of the Constitution, of the Bill of Rights? No, it's God's law. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. You can't be a partaker of the fruit of the Spirit. The Spirit doesn't live in you. Consider what I say, and the Lord give the understanding in all things. That's the Holy Spirit teaching us. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Paul's gospel is my gospel, or Peter's gospel. Same gospel I preach. Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Wherein I suffer, even as a man living in a van, even though unto bonds, in a van, even though the word of God is not living in a van, it's living inside me. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain salvation, which is in Christ Jesus, with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we are dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, because he does not sin, if we don't allow him to live in our life, then he will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he can't deny himself. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they may strive not into words, but to profit, but to the subverting of hearers. That isn't the subverting of them, it's the changing of them. Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And we're going to end with that. Let the word of God live within you.
and quit falling for the wiles of the devil. God bless you. Bye.